tutorial on how to uh, select the ranges for your trees for the DDH since I, I got a request for that. So to start things off we're gonna need to uh, I'm gonna use Norky London as an example and the first thing that we need to do is to be, take the uh, DDH and make it into integers um, because if you go into your attribute table and if you try to uh, sort them um, the DDH right now doesn't really work because the, uh, it thinks it's not numbers, it thinks it's a text. So that won't help for the next step. So the first thing that we need to do is to make it into integer, integers. So to do that, click on your pencil and then click on new field. I'm gonna name it uh, DDH T for integer. Make sure it's a whole number integer. Click OK. <coughs> Now, if you go all the way to the end of your table, you can see it. <clears throat> so now we're going to populate it. So in order to do that, you click here and then choose the DVH uh, INT. Click on the E. <clears throat> and then we're going to use this expression. Uh, T INT. So I'm going to just copy that and delete the, the field. And then from fields and values, Double click the DBH because that's the data that we want to copy. And then click OK. And then update all. So now the, these are numbers that the uh, GIS knows that are actually numbers, so we can use it to sort things out. So now we're just going to unclick the pencil, click Save. And now we're going to move on to the next step. So uh, the reason why I, I ask you guys to make sure that you know your ranges, because these ranges, I, I made this as an example, but these ranges are going to come in handy. Um, these are the type of trees that we're going to choose next. So uh, in order to do that, we're going to go into our layer. And then um, we're going to select feature using an expression. And we're going to use the following expression, which is, so you go into fields and values, you grab your, um, uh, your field that is the DBH uh, integer, and then capital I, capital N, open bracket, and then my ranges. So like, when those are, these are all my, the numbers that I need. So I'm just going to copy and paste if I can. And then close brackets. Uh, it seems the output appears is zero, so I think it worked. So now, if we if we click select features, now we know that's 5,943 that were chosen, so which means it works. So we're going to close this, and we're going to save this as a new layer. So export select feature, uh, save feature. Save select feature as. Click on the three dots here. I'm going to put an orthogonal three uh, ranges. Click OK or save and then OK. So now I can hide the other trees because I'm not going to need it anymore. And these are the ranges that I'm going to sort out. Um, the first thing that we want to do though it's like if you can see that the circles the circles are too big so it's hard to read information that way so we're going to modify them first so we're going to go into properties simple marker and i'm going to reduce the size to 1.4000 click apply and then okay and you can see it's a little bit better you can see a little bit more and now we're going to use the uh graded symbol to uh, to actually uh, give them colors depending on the ranges that you guys chose so to do that go into properties um, symbol we're gonna go graduated we're gonna choose the dbh integer uh, the precision i'm gonna put it as zero because we don't have any <clears throat> we don't have any decimals and then we're gonna class to five I, I want a classes. I think I was talking with Ben and he said that this is the best way of uh, actually representing it. So we're going to do that. He also pointed out that for the color ramp, the best one to use is the 
uh, Viridis, I think that's how you pronounce it, because it makes it gives you a better range of colors. Uh, so choose that, and we want the smaller value to be the lighter one. So then you click on this arrow here and then invert uh, color ramp, and now we have it. So we have the lowest value as lighter and the highest value as uh, darker. Now we're gonna edit the values here. So in order to do that. Uh, and this is what the ranges come in handy. So then you double click here. So for the first one, I want uh, my value to be one, two, six, because that's how I have it here, right? So I'm gonna in enter all these ranges into here. One, two. So one to six, click okay. And then the next one will be six, two, 12. Click OK. The third one, 12 to 18. OK. Next one it will be 18 to 48. Click OK. Next one, 48 to 100. Next. 100 to 107 then 107 to 124 and lastly 124 to 161 so uh, there we go now we're gonna classify uh, sorry don't click classify just apply and then click OK. And now there we go. Your trees are divided depending on the ranges that you have chosen. So the values will depend on which um, range you choose. So that's, this is pretty much it. This is how you do this. And another thing that I was going to show you is that I should have shown you before is like whenever you go and you want to show this on, or print it, um, you can go into printout. I think I showed this, but there is a something that I forgot to mention. So I'm gonna load my new map. And then you guys know about the scale bar, which is right here. Just drag it and it's gonna be here. You can modify it here. But also you can also you can actually add a legend with all the information that you have in your map. Now if I just wanted to show what each of the colors means and then I will modify this. So in order to modify your legend, you click on the legend here on top and then unclick the auto update because that is gonna update whatever you have, you're have you using on GIS. We don't want that because you wanna modify it. So then I don't need this layer. So I'm just gonna delete it here. And you, as you can see, it was removed from my legend. Um, and then I don't need this guy either. So I don't need this one. So now I got the legend of what my trees actually mean. And if I want to change the name, because you can see it doesn't make any sense, so I can say uh, DBH of trees. And there we go. You can actually put your legend also on JS. So hope this helps. If you have, if you guys have any questions, you can email me. I'll try to answer as quick as I can.